evening, everybody. It's a little after 7 o'clock, so we're going to start uh, tonight. We have one hearing that was scheduled that is going to be continued. Um, so we need a vote to continue that, correct? Yeah, to open and immediately oh, we need to, uh, to okay. um, June 26th at 7 p.m. Okay, so we had a uh, what was supposed to be a hearing at 7 o'clock for a site plan from Catherine and John Chavaroli for a 24-foot wide curb cut uh, of which 15 feet is allowed at 66 Bancroft Road, Northampton map ID 31B-3. So we'll open that up, but the applicant asked to continue that to June 26th. So, so moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? No discussion. So we'll bump that to two weeks from tonight at 7 o'clock as well. Um, yes. Okay. So that one's done for tonight anyway. So after that, we have some discussion on language for zoning. And first up is uh, U, R, B, and C on the uh, some placement language for seven plus units. Right. So, and everybody get the email um, with the version, hopefully, that includes all the text changes. So I hope you guys were able to check that. And make sure I incorporated everything that you guys discussed. And then also, obviously, more hash if you want to. <laughs> Who was here uh, Monday night? Two, three, Everybody. four. Everybody. Oh, really? Five. How would you know? I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I let everybody know, full disclosure. Um, oh, you were surprised that when the meeting started? Sorry about that. Um, I had uh, just a few edit just word changes that are editorial. They're not, um, but I, I don't know that we need to go through it. I, I'm happy not going through it paragraph by paragraph. That, that is how we do it. Mm -hmm. What changes specifically? Um, at the end of uh, the new section two, that last sentence just doesn't read well to me. And I, yeah. I have a. Uh, you mean the one that begins dead end? No, yeah. such street stapes include rebuilding as necessary granite curves, ADA compliant concrete sidewalks, tree belts, and low impact development standards when possible, or any necessary drainage improvements triggered by these changes. Okay. Um, Such, listen to this one instead. Such streetscapes include rebuilding as necessary granite curbs, ADA compliant concrete sidewalks, tree belts, low impact develop, according to low impact development standards when possible for drainage improvements triggered by these changes. So you want commas where, where when possible is? Um, I took out the word and mm. and replaced it with according to low impact development standards. In the end, somewhere. How about tree belts, drainage improvements according to low impact development standards when possible for any necessary drainage improvements? So put the drainage improvements right after tree belts. That would be fine. Mm -hmm. Still in the end, though. You can have a list of things without an and. Right. And drainage improvements. Yeah. Uh, the other one on uh, number eight, I thought that uh, it should read uh, private alleys or shared streets. Um, I don't know whether with pedestrians. And then in the next, we talk about yield streets. So there are actually three different kinds of, of mm -hmm. transportation yeah. things there. Instead of the comma, you mean? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So in the first clause, we're talking about private alleys or shared streets, and then we get around to talking about ye or yield streets. Mm -hmm. Right. So driveways private, and private driveways shall be designed to function as private alleys or shared streets. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or yield streets. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and in the very last uh, red change on the third page, where we've referred to the board, I don't know, but since there are zoning boards and other boards, I think it should be planning board. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. I thought it looked good. I don't understand six and seven. It, it, should that, is six a sentence? 
Um, well, first of all, it should be that when I, these aren't, is there shouldn't be a six and a seven, it's just one six. So um, that's one issue, that's, you know, probably the um, one issue, because that was, that was one long paragraph, so something happened in the Microsoft Word numbering funkiness. Um, and then um, it should be, so, that's fine. Well, so the whole thing starts out with a list of the following design standards should be complied with. And then number six would be, um, well, it could be reworded, design standards related to the length of dead end streets, protection of natural features, sidewalks, wheelchair ramps, landscaping, utilities, and, and that's semicolon keeps coming back. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I never heard of it before. But it's like a part of a sentence. Um, well, we could say shall comply with the design standards for the length, or shall comply with, yeah, design yeah. standards. That's probably what it means. Well, no, actually, that would be good too because it says. Any such project shall comply with the following. You can't start off with shall comply. Okay. The following. Right. Shall comply with the following. Are, are there design standards part of the ordinance? I mean, is that a defined term, defi design standards? In the subdivision regulations. Uh, maybe that's what happened. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I mean, just merging those back together is going to make it. Yeah. Six and seven. Yeah. Right. I think that, that's really the confusion. Right. So. Yeah. It, there's the start of the sentence and the rest of it. Yeah. Right. So it would really be six, and then the next one seven. There is no eight. seven then, so right? There's nine. There are nine right. total right. standards. Yeah. Anybody else? Just in number eight of the one of the standards. So the only the only thing we changed there was to take out the word affordability in the I remember that conversation the other night. Right. So um, because there was a uh, consensus that um, the 1,200 square foot gross floor area um, wasn't necessarily going to be guaranteed to be an affordable unit, that we shouldn't refer to it as an affordability standard. But, it, but it, it's not got the affordability standard. That I guess I'm, then I'm not understanding why is, why is there the time limit? Well, the issue was about the time limit is really that you're keeping, if you're creating smaller units, which very um, likely could be more affordable than a bigger unit when it's constructed, that you're maintaining that small size unit for a period of time. So that you're not just buying in to get in cheap and then you're going to build, you know, a 3,000 foot addition mm -hmm. to the back side of a 1,200 square foot unit. That it's really, it isn't, it isn't meant as a means to get around that or meet that standard, but that you're truly creating units of that size and they're going to be lasting for a while. So um, the five year is arbitrary, but it's meant to say, you know, we really are trying to foster um, a range of of housing unit sizes, and if you're going to go for this one, we want you to um, be honest about it and build it. And I think it does that. It. it keeps people from gaining it. Right. I was going to say it's not long enough. I mean, when you do Section Eight or low-income housing, it's 
like 30 years. But the issue, at least for me, I think about sort of there's a third world development pattern in sites and services where, you know, if these were home ownership units, someone might at age 30 buy a 1,250 square foot unit and maybe they want to, you know, and then as their life moves on, they may be able to be in a position to add more rooms to it, which is fine. We don't want the developer to game the system, mm -hmm. but if the person living there can do it. I don't know, in five years does this see, I mean, in a place like Northampton or a place where you have high property values for smaller, I mean, five years isn't a very long time to wait to make a big killing. I mean, it, it just seems like it's not long enough given that the return could be pretty large. I mean, I, I don't know, I just, I don't know. Well, five years just doesn't seem very long in the life of a house or a home or whatever. Yeah, it's not that long, but I don't think the issue is about preventing people from building equity and making a killing. Mm -hmm. It's really saying, we want buildings when they come on the ground, we'd like to see smaller units. So if um, we're seeing those being added to the mix, then after that, the end user, you know, um, has the ability to make that adjustment um, without being, you know, having their hands tied. If, if something unforeseen happens down like the road. twins. It's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's the difference between trying to make, trying to develop property that people can get into because it's less expensive and, and can, uh, retaining a certain proportion of the housing at that level. Mm -hmm because you're opening it up, but not particularly. We're trying to keep fair housing, uh, low-income housing, at a certain proportion. But in this case, you're not trying to keep it at a certain proportion. Right, and this is really meeting the market rate, the, the sort of not the affordable housing that subsidized affordable housing, but the housing types that are People who have jobs, I mean, people who work for the city that don't get paid anything can't afford to live in Northampton, so they're going to go and buy a smaller unit so they can, you know, do that. Um, so it's not, again, if it were subsidized housing, though, I think you're right. We need that right. longer term, you know, definitive um, 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 statement that's, that would require that to be maintained. Just for clarity, I wonder if eight should actually be two sections. Building should be one of the environment, one of the following environmental standards is eight, and then nine is this building should be one of the following standards. It just makes the numbering more consistent with the rest of it. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that seems like a reasonable. I think this one's been hashed through so many times that yes, exactly <laughs> right. forget the, the, the number, what happens to the numbering. <coughs> so we're back to 10. That's an even number anyway. <laughs> I, I can't get paragraph 8, or unless it's 7 now, <laughs> <laughs> um, to make sense, or at least the first Driveways and private roadways shall be designed to function as private alleys, comma, shared streets, comma, with pedestrians and cyclists, comma. I That's the one where we added the um, conjunction there, or driveways and private roadways shall be designed to function as private alleys or shared streets. With oh, I was, um, okay, I missed, I was sleeping then. Right. Private alleys or, or shared street. streets, sorry. <coughs> or shared streets and the comma after street come out? Comes yes, out? That, it, it would be better with the comma after right. streets out. Yeah. All right, that's what you know what the streets right. are that sharing. That was your right. suggestion. Yeah. Right. I was reading it while you were talking about it. <laughs> Any other comments? So this was discussed Monday, revised tonight. We need a motion to um, recommend. Recommend to City Council. And close the public here. No, they already closed the public Oh, they closed it, I'm sorry. Anybody? John? Um, I 
recommend we recommend the city council, or I move that we recommend the city council uh, ordinance pertaining to uh, replacement of the moratorium on construction of seven or more units in the URB district with language specified in section 350B of the code of ordinances. As amended tonight. As amended tonight. Second. Second pass. Does that take care of both? <clears throat> um, before we vote, actually, I thought of something else. The, the, in the environmental standards, the current stretch code, is it clear? Does that mean current at the time you get a building permit or at the time the ordinance was adopted or what? Well, it's meant to be, um, you know, rolling. So, so it should be at the time the building permit is obtained? Right. Mm -hmm. And then the stretch code in a, in a, in and the current stretch code. Current at the time building, building permits obtained makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I would amend They're coming to okay, so you amend it. I'm sorry, wait a minute. They're coming to us for, the, you know, this whole list of things is for special permit approval. So that would precede building permit. Oh, it's the time special permit? Yeah, that would okay. seem, I mean, <coughs> otherwise we've got right. the cart before right. the yeah, right. right. <coughs> John, you want to amend that again? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a question now. Um, <laughs> is stretch code, I mean, is that, do, we don't need to clarify what that is. I mean, just it, someone couldn't come back and use that some, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's the accepted term phrase I, I just I could put it in quotes yeah. Yeah, it's an energy stretch code energy yeah stretch code. and stretch code in quotes mm-hmm John again uh, as amended <laughs> <laughs> second. second again all in favor discussion okay, okay we're good with that Next up, continuation of the hearing on zoning map changes to the FFR zoning district. So that's the pair B and C, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you only have B in front of you, but it's the same language. Okay. Um, so the so if you remember, a few years ago, we started a process of, um, some of you may not remember, you weren't here. This is probably true. <laughs> started the process of um, we, we already had what was called a farm, forest, and river, um, rivers um, overlay district, which was a, a district was the most stringent before Special Conservancy came along in terms of what could be developed. And it was really meant to protect those pristine areas of the city um, from development and originally to transfer development rights to the state hospital. Um, that never really came to fruition. Um, but we still wanted to use this zone to, be, to, to, to sort of start mapping out where those protected areas of um, the city are. So we started by um, rezoning all the city-owned conservation areas. So that's why there's this map shows existing farms, forests, and rivers that are permanently protected, but we also didn't want to leave them with a residential zoning category to, it's more, really more to say, this land is not up for development. Um, mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> all these um, uh, proposed areas are just parcels that the city has acquired since that initial mapping um, for the city conservation areas. And there's one parcel that we, it's still not, um, we're not sure if it's going to be included on this map or taken out because we haven't quite closed on the deal yet with the uh, property owner. So if it um, doesn't happen before the council change, we'll just pull it right at the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, this map shows the parcels that the city has purchased, and then we, now we want to rezone them. So what are the criteria for putting properties the city has purchased into this system? Basically, any conservation per property we purchase except land that's in the floodplain, because the floodplain zoning is even stricter. So if there were one the day after tomorrow, is this set up in such a way that it would go in automatically, or do you have to add them one at a time? To add them one at a time. Why? It's called floating zone, which Massachusetts doesn't allow. Aha, uh -huh. okay. 
And so that's why there's so many here, because we waited until we amassed enough right. to, mm -hmm. to right. make sense to come mm -hmm. forward. And how are they safer in that zone than not in it, given that they were purchased for conservation purposes? Mostly they're not. Mostly this doesn't really matter. It's a really truth in advertising. Okay. This came up, I don't know, a decade ago when we did a detailed build-out analysis. And the building analysis was just wrong because it didn't get the conservation lands. No. So it just sort of started thinking we should okay. disclose what we okay. can do, but mm -hmm. legally it does not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in your ordinance, where the word city is, that piece of typo is still hanging around on that same thing it was hanging around in last week. That's because I didn't change that. I didn't change the map. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carolyn, is that? Uh, and I can't read that font. <laughs> yeah. is There's that. that. Uh, proposed uh, piece that's out in Gold Road, is that the Girl Scout property? Probably. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I figured it not, not the, the reason it doesn't quite go to the road. Right. Is they that's the, the. Right. Right. Which is just, is under contract. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, like two weeks after the hearing. I don't know who's part oh, of it. Yeah. Oh, it's, huh? I had missed it a long ago. Hmm. Okay. So same thing, we need a recommendation for council. Oh, um, I move that. Uh, uh, recommend, uh, move that we recommend the council and ordinance uh, providing the code of ordinances be amended by revising section 30. 350.34 of said code rezone all city conservation land farms and forests and rivers that is not already farms and forests rivers, rivers or special conservancy. Second. Second, Devin. All in favor? Discussion? Okay. okay, two up, two down. Last one. Continuation of hearing and zoning changes to the definition of affordable housing units. So, um, we have a whole section of zoning ordinance that has the definitions um, for terms that we use regularly throughout the code. And I don't think we've really touched affordable housing, um, this definition, for a really long time. Um, but periodically, when the planning board has approved special permits for um, um, cluster development, or which is, the, um, or I'm trying to think of their other scenarios. I subdivision. guess subdivision regulations. When waivers are granted, um, there's a provision that says you can get certain waivers or you can get special permits if you provide affordable housing in accordance with the definition. And um, unless the special permit, right now, unless the special permit or subdivision approval specifies that those units have to follow the standards under um, 40B and be uh, counted towards the city's subsidized housing inventory, then there's a real gray area as to um, whether or not the applicant will move forward and, and follow that procedure because the definition doesn't specify that that's what it is. And the reason why it's important is because it does take a little bit more, it is a little bit more burdensome for an applicant to go through that process and get um, um, to have the properties then the units on the list and there's oversight by um, DHCD about how those units are constructed and so um, we felt like it was important that all these new units that come in that are um, um, that qualify should go on our inventory so that we're constantly making sure that we're staying above that 10% threshold um, and that it's the state recognizes that we're above our 10% threshold. So that's sort of the impetus for the change here, and we felt like it made sense given that we're making the changes to the URB and C district that say that one of the criteria is to create these affordable housing units. Mm -hmm. So it's really to add that, and then also to, um, we've heard from folks that it's, that it's, we had a more onerous, um, longevity requirement than what typically occurs throughout the state and what the state requires is um, is it 30 years or 33 30. 30 year restriction for affordability whereas our zoning specifically says 99 so there's con there's often a conflict when the applicants come forward and say well wait a second the state only requires 30 why are you saying 99 can't I just do 30 
And the real issue is for the home ownership units, mm -hmm. not necessarily the rental units that are long, you know, in the game for the long term right. by one single owner. So this ordinance also splits um, the distinction between those. So we get the, the rental units for the full 99 mm -hmm. years, continue that, but then separate <laughs> out the um, home ownership units um, to be consistent with what the state typically requires. And we feel like that's, people feel like that's more mm -hmm. palatable. Mm -hmm. Can I ask one question? Um, what happens in the case where rental units convert to ownership units? Like if a rental building is condoized, do you get credit for the number of years it's been affordable already? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I would think that you might have to start the clock over. Well, no. I mean, this okay. isn't. Can you even do that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, because the units created that time mm -hmm. and the city is getting a deed restriction on it. Right. Okay. So then at that point, the city would look at it on a case by case basis okay. for doing it. So Hampton Court, the affordability is about to expire and we're renewing that affordability. Mm -hmm. um, and so okay. it becomes part of the negotiation piece. So, so they if have, you're converting, right. if you're condolizing, then you would. Okay. So what we're looking at, this long paragraph, is or would be the definition of the term affordable units? The, term, the affordable um, units is already in the definition. The red line um, is, are the additional is, you know, two, two sentences or two, mm -hmm. one sentence and a modification of a second sentence are the only changes oh. to that paragraph. So the current definition says housing units with the planning board finds are affordable for rent or purchase. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't strike me as a great definition, but I guess we're not changing that. You can, I mean, it's, it's on the table, so you can certainly make a suggestion. Not how you like define something as ABC if the planning board determines that it's ABC. I mean, it's not circular. It's not a definition. Well, if you said affordable units, are those units which? Is that what's bothering you? It's the planning. I mean, theoretically, the planning board could decide that some luxury housing is affordable. Yeah. And then does that make them affordable? Well, for the it's still, purposes so you still of have this. to meet the 80%. They have to be affordable for people making 80% <clears> of the median household income for Northampton. Um, shouldn't there be just some absolute standard, not something determined by the planning board, but an absolute? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I don't know how old this definition is, but my assumption is, I mean, typically affordable housing units aren't created by right. I mean, someone has to just go to the building department and say, I'm going to build 25 right. it has to be a you know, housing units affordable. and I'm going to right. deem them affordable. Yeah. They're never going to come. I mean, the ones that are really um, would fall under here are, are projects that are being permitted already. So I think my assumption would be that's why it says the planning board because it's already in a process. Well, um, somebody has to make a decision for this community about what constitutes affordable housing and that definition goes back and looks at this 80 percent I mean we're using another right. we're, we're accepting an exterior standard is what right I mean, and part of this is done. to be make it easier for developer because you could say the DHCD Department of Housing and Community Development fines are affordable because a practical matter Probably most of the, the vast majority of these units, not all of them, but most majority of these units are also getting state and federal funding. So somebody else has already, already made that determination. Once in a rare while, someone's doing the project themselves. So. But they, the DDC, the, the state must have some explicit they do. Um, criteria. Expensive? Yeah, why isn't 80%? Why is it this so there's two different things. That's, that's the income, but trying to figure out. How much can I afford to pay? It, if I'm earning forty thousand dollars a family, I'm below eighty percent. 
Mm -hmm. Tell me how much that means they can spend per month. That's right. a harder piece. Oh, okay. It doesn't right. say that. Right. It doesn't, just doesn't strike me as a definition. Well, I think what the, the idea is that if someone says, I want to build affordable housing, then we can go back and say, well, if you're going to build affordable housing, it has to meet this definition of affordable housing because, the, as you mentioned before, you know, a luxury condo could be affordable for someone who's, you know, not at the top 1 percent but at in the top 2 percent. <laughs> um, but it is true if you just wanted to do it, if you just did housing units which are affordable for renter purchase and left that out because, as you said, it still has to go before the board. Yeah. Practically, it's going to be the same result. So, so if you're more comfortable dropping it, it doesn't make a big difference because it doesn't come before the board for approval. Right. Dropping which, Dwayne? Dropping the planning board finds. So housing oh, units which are affordable for rent or purchase. Yeah, that, it implies that the planning board can make a judgment call. Can deem call. something right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it says what the planning board has made a judgment call. Do we determine as a matter of judgment whether something is affordable? It seems like, isn't it, don't you have, <clears throat> doesn't it have to be for 80, do not exceed 80 percent of median income and don't, it wouldn't require more than 30 percent of their net or gross household income or some, isn't there some definition it, like along those Yeah, lines? the third yeah, the question is not spending more than a third of your income per month for your housing, yeah. which is a little more than it used to be, but. So shouldn't that be part of this definition then? The problem is there are things you might want to consider. So if, for example, someone was doing a net zero building, that those formulas don't necessarily allow you to pay a greater percentage of your rent, or someone was doing a project downtown where there was likely a greater likelihood they wouldn't need to own a car. So the reason we put this in the first place is to give the planning board a little more flexibility. Mm -hmm. But you're right, it also creates a more, a less defined piece as well. Right. I think Wayne's fix, would you read yours again? Because I think that solves my the housing, unit, housing units which are affordable for rent or purchase. And we don't need to include the 30 percent of income standard, as you say, that would exclude consideration of the things you just mentioned. Right. Right. Because as a practical matter, every single one of these projects are also getting either a site plan approval, subdivision approval, or special permit from the planning board. Yes, you're still going to have that discussion, but, you, you, but it doesn't have to be in the definition. Right. Oh, you part of that, right? That makes sense. We're good with that. Yeah, it, uh, uh, yeah. We shouldn't imply that the planning board can make just a judgment call, as it either is or isn't. Okay. John, you're up again. Oh, <laughs> uh, I move. Uh, that we recommend to City Council um, the definition of uh, affordable housing uh, in section, by revising sec chapter 350, section 2.1, definitions of said code uh, as amended. Second. Second. Yes. All in favor? Discussion? Okay. Three. Um, minutes. I didn't get to They're not finished. I did. I, they're yeah, still yeah, looking yeah. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I had to reformat some things. Just to announce the thing. Yes. So I passed that. Actually, Alan didn't get this. Um, so just so you know, we're um, doing a hazard mitigation plan. We have to do this every five years. Um, it serves two purposes. It helps us plan for, you know, all sorts of hazards, mm -hmm. including this time for the first time really looking at um, hazards that are exacerbated by climate change. Um, and it also makes us eligible for FEMA uh, funding. Um, and frankly, it's probably more driven by the latter than the former. Um, when we did this plan maybe 10 years ago, it had huge changes. That's what led to the meadows, the, all the rezoning in the meadows. Yeah. 
we're not really doing any major significant changes this time around. Um, we're really just sort of updating the There's plan. There's been a lot of fuss about FEMA ma maps, though, recently. There's been a lot of fuss about FEMA maps. Mm -hmm. Northampton has not been mapped yet. So when we get the new maps, that's going to be a big uh, issue over okay. here. Mm -hmm. And then we did the dramatic thing you all approved a year ago, two yeah. years ago, of we're now, f we treat the 500-year flood mm -hmm. as if it's a 100-year flood, mm -hmm. you know, as a right. surrogate for climate change. And then we're doing other things in terms of resiliency planning for, like, emergency services. But there's not a lot that's going to affect you all. Anyway, this is, the, this is the second of two public hearings on the plan. You're welcome to come. It's not that exciting, but you're certainly welcome <laughs> to come. That's quite Don't an invitation. Be I know, I know. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know when you might expect the maps, the flood maps. Okay. No, they've done Hamden County. We have not, no one's given us a date. Um, we hear rumors and that they're working on it, but we've heard no dates before. Um, our assumption is the Connecticut River floodplain is probably not going to change significantly because um, it's such a big floodplain. We have more storm events with climate change, but we have less snowfall with climate change, and the dams haven't changed, so that's probably not significant. The Mill River may change quite significantly because mm -hmm. we've lost dams since 1974. Mm -hmm. We know we've had a few storms that, in some places, <laughs> exceeded the 100 year elevation. Mm -hmm. At the same point, places downstream did not hit the 100 year. Mm -hmm. So it just it seems like they're not right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but, but they would do, if, if and when they come to Northampton, they would do both the mill and the Connecticut or just the Connecticut? They should do it all. They yeah. should be doing everything. They're doing county by county and city by city. So. And how does what that is going to happen occur with what dams may be taken out as part of the requirements that we have for making those dams safe or taking them out? Um, at this point, probably the lead dam, which is coming mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. is probably not going to have any significant effect okay. on the flood elevation other than, I mean, well, I'm sorry, it will have some effect immediately downstream from the dam, but nothing significant. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there's been no plans to take out dams. Take out the the one on Pine Street collapsed, so it's <laughs> changed. Um, Smith College is investing a lot in their dam, so it's not going to change. change. Okay. So okay. I'm not aware of anything mm -hmm. else. Um, I could be wrong. I could be missing something. Yeah. Only that one on the Manhattan. That clear falls. Oh, right. <laughs> right. There okay. could be some changes there. But they're not going to, are they looking at that anyway? They will be looking at that, yeah. Okay. So you're kind of right. There is a small one with clear falls as the swimming area mm -hmm. where they've sort of slowly been taking that down. I don't mm -hmm. know what effect it will have mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's homes down gradient. So even if it's big geographically, it may not affect any mm -hmm. homes. But. Mm -hmm. Does this address anything about? Emergency communications? Um, no. Um, there's a separate emergency plan that's dealing with the, well, the interoperability they've been working on for a long time and the whatever megahertz thing they've been working on for a long time. So, no, there's nothing there. It does affect a little bit this effort to look at a microgrid to sort of how do you harden the buildings that would be, if we lost power for three weeks, how do we make sure there's enough power to serve the emergency buildings? But that's mostly just going to talk about another plan the city's working on. Right. So it probably just a couple of paragraphs okay. referring to the other document. Will that be incorporated at all, do you think, in, the, in our update of the Sustainable Northampton plan? Yes. Okay. Any other new business? No? Yeah. John? Move we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Adjourned. <laughs>